Hey everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to create a lead scoring workflow in HubSpot that's based on your lead scores. So if I just share my screen here, the first thing you're going to want to do is set your criteria for your lead score. So HubSpot automatically creates this property called HubSpot score. And what you're going to want to do is navigate to settings under properties, find your HubSpot score. Now, as you can see here, I've already gone and applied some basic filters and lead scoring. Um, so I've added in some company name for positive scores, first name, last name, email, phone number, job title, marketing information, et cetera, and a few negative scores. When building your lead score out, you're going to want to consider factors across contact data. So for example, if the first name, last name, phone number, um, or country are known emails. So if they've provided the business email as opposed to a Gmail or an Outlook, the number of bounces previous marketing emails have resulted in, um, if your marketing emails were also resulted in spam, your site activity, so the number of form submissions, or if a contact has visited specific pages such as your Contact Us page, if they viewed any webinars, uh, their paid media activity, if they match one of your personas or ideal customer profiles, the number of videos they've watched or how long they have watched a video for. You're also going to want to consider sales insights. So what their budget is, the number of sales activities they've had with your team, the last time you contacted them, and if they booked any meetings. And then the last factor you're going to want to consider is HubSpot insights. So these are factors such as the lead status, their revenue, or if they're a member of specific lists, and you're going to allocate either positive or negative lead scores accordingly. So once you've built out your lead scores, then you're going to want to go into your workflows and just start building one from scratch. The first thing to do is set up triggers. So this would be your contact properties. So we're going to look for that HubSpot score. And we're going to want to make sure it's known. And you might also add in there became a lead date is less than two days ago. Then adding in an if then branch, we're going to want to set some criteria based on that lead score. So here we're making sure that their lead score is still in the positive range and they should be contacted. If none is met, we're going to check out if their HubSpot score was greater than 50. And less than 100. Another branch for if their HubSpot score is greater than 100. So here we're going to call this the red score. And if it's less than 50, amber score, 50 to 100. And the last branch is their green score if they're 100 plus. So if the contact falls into the red score, it's probably worth nurturing them in a few marketing emails prior to having them engage with sales, just because, well, they're not ready for that conversation. So what we'll do is enroll them in a workflow, but if you set it up as a sequence, that works as well. For a score of 50 to 100, they fall into the amber score probably worth our marketing team following up with them. So we're going to set up a create task title, marketing team to follow up and to assign the task to the contact owner. Then if they have a green score of 100, we're going to want to rotate it between our sales team.
and then create a task for our sales team to prepare for follow up and start a deal. So there you have it. That is a basic lead nurturing um, workflow that's based off of the lead score. So what this does is now, um, depending on where they are in their life cycle stage, they'll be properly allocated to marketing or sales teams. When they've reached a sales qualified lead, HubSpot will then notify that contact owner for them to begin reaching out to them, um, enrolling them in sequences and doing what they can to potentially book a demo, get that first call going and turn them into a paying customer. Hope you found this helpful. And if you have any questions, let me know.